Picture this, you invest in dental implants expecting them to last a lifetime, but a few years down the road, issues start cropping up, receding gums, bone loss, or even implant failure. Why? Because of something most patients and sometimes even dentists never consider. It's not new information in my field, but it's something I learned again recently at the annual Academy of Periodontics meeting in beautiful San Diego, and I knew I had to share it with you. If you're thinking about getting dental implants, this could save you years of trouble and thousands of dollars. As a board certified periodontist, I've been saying this over and over on this channel. The long-term success of your dental implants depends on the foundation, your bone and gums. These two factors are often overlooked or misunderstood, but they're critical for avoiding catastrophic consequences down the road. At the conference, a colleague shared some shocking cases where improper planning led to major issues just years after implant placement. Unfortunately, I see these mistakes all the time. Let me explain what you need to know to protect your investment. Let's start with something no one likes to talk about, your gums. I know, right? They're not the most exciting topic, but think of your gums as a protective seal around your implant, much like weatherproofing around a window. If that seal isn't strong, everything inside is at risk. Yet gums are one of the most overlooked aspects of implant planning. There are two types of gum tissue in your mouth, keratinized gingiva and oral mucosa. The keratinized gingiva is a thicker, pinker, non-movable tissue close to your teeth. It's like the protective armor. The mucosa, on the other hand, is thinner and more movable. It's less about protection and more about flexibility. By the way, check out this video I made showing you what it exactly looks like inside the mouth. For healthy implants, especially in the back teeth, you need at least two millimeters of keratinized gingiva on both the outer and inner sides of the implant, and two to three millimeters on the top. But for implants in the front, where aesthetics are critical, the requirements are even more demanding. You'll need at least five millimeters of keratinized gingiva in width on the front of the tooth, and two millimeters in thickness, and around four millimeters on top. Without these precise dimensions, you risk gum recession, which can expose the implant or cause future infections. Now let's talk about the foundation, your bone. This is where I see the biggest mistakes in implant placement. Many dentists aim to place the widest implant possible, thinking it will provide the most stability. On the surface, this sounds logical, but it's one of the worst things you can do for long-term success. When an implant is placed in jawbone that isn't thick enough to support it, the surrounding bone can thin out and the gums can recede over time. A colleague of mine recently shared a case where this happened. Just three months after implant placement, the patient's gums were already thinning out dramatically. Their only options were to remove the implant, perform bone grafting, wait five to six months for healing, and then place a new implant. That's an avoidable, expensive, and time-consuming process. So a big part of the issue comes down to something we call biotype. Everyone's bone and gum structure is different. Some people naturally have thick biotypes with dense bone and robust gum tissue, while others have thin biotypes that are more prone to issues. Unfortunately, thin biotypes are at a much higher risk of gum recession and bone loss after implant placement. The good news is that even if you have a thin biotype, we can enhance your foundation before placing implants. Techniques like bone grafting and gum grafting allow us to manipulate the thickness of your bone and gums to create a stable and durable environment for your implants. This is why pre-implant planning is so important. It's not just about placing the implant, but ensuring the long-term health of the surrounding tissues. So what does this mean if you're considering dental implants? It means you need a surgeon who understands the delicate balance between bone, gums, and implant size. It's not just about getting the implant in, it's about planning for 10 to 15 or 20 years down the road. If you're thinking about implants, I strongly encourage you to watch my videos on bone grafting, gum grafting, and implant planning. You'll find links in the descriptions below. These videos dive deeper into how we can build a strong foundation for your smile. And if you've already had implants placed and are experiencing issues like gum recession or sensitivity, don't wait. Reach out to a qualified periodontist to assess your situation. Prevention is always easier and less expensive than correction. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more insights, and share it with someone who's considering implants. Your smile deserves the best care. Dental implants are an incredible solution, but only when they're done right. With the right planning, techniques, and surgeon, you can enjoy a smile that lasts a lifetime. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.